and one and everybody welcome to our latest installment of our wrap uh, after our meetings as, as you can see nathan boyles graham fountain and the illustrious greg casella deputy county administrator have joined us for today Good morning. Uh, our appointed referee uh, sitting between right. us if, if we start fussing he calls the flag yeah. <laughs> I think that's kind of a dangerous place to be, especially since he works for y'all, but okay. Uh, but anyway, we have a lot to talk about. We had a lot of lively discussion today. Uh, what do you guys want to cover first? Well, I just, uh, first, I wanted to start with uh, whether or not Graham spoke more in this meeting than he ever has in any meeting ever. <laughs> Where there's I don't some, think that's true. some debate as to which one of us can talk more. That's right. uh, I, I feel like I'm losing. Graham insists that's not the case. I would simply suggest to the citizens out there, go watch the tape and decide for yourselves. <laughs> but don't use a stop, uh, <laughs> a timekeeper. Yeah, yeah stop uh, watching. Yeah. It was a good meeting. It was a uh, there was a lot of debate today. You know, the, the big item I think um, was obviously sales tax and our discussion on um, the topic of the list. Uh, the representative list. Uh, Commissioner Fountain, you want to start with that one, you think? Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of debate about whether we were going to approve a list today and what the list would be called. But I think I think in our bottom analysis, moving till next week when we have a, a, a workshop on Wednesday afternoon, uh, uh, go into that and we're going to invite our, our new committee, uh, that's our uh, advisory committee for the sales tax, to have them come there too and they can participate and kind of get the feel of what the workshop's all about. Uh, I, I think we came to the conclusion that we definitely have got to get a list out. I, I think the big debate was, do we do we put down a list that makes it sound like, you know, that is the projects, or do we put out a list that says these are a list of needs that it will be considered, there may be other needs that may be considered at the appropriate time, and I think that's kind of where we were going, that, that we certainly don't want people to think that we put out a list and we're not doing it, but as I said quite uh, vigorously, the people I'm I'm hearing from, and it's been a lot just in the last week. That yeah, I guess it's getting closer to time, sure. and people are hearing more discussions at these things. But they're saying uh, we want to know some of these projects, which y'all going to do, sure. because we don't want y'all throwing in stuff that we've seen in the past that wasn't really related to the three areas of of transportation, uh, capacity, roads. Uh, stormwater, uh, environmental, you know, having to do with that and the environmental quality and then public safety. They just don't want mission creep and us getting outside of that sure. after they vote for it. But, I, but I, I think the debate was good. I know it took a long time. Well, and I, I, think think there's a, and I think there's a way to get there. And, you know, I really, I kind of keep going back to our matrix, our, our paving matrix. You know, I, when I came, became a commissioner, I learned very quickly that we didn't really have a defensible method for determining which roads were going to get paved. Uh, and it took us a couple years, but we fixed that. So we basically went out and got data on the 100 plus dirt roads in Okaloosa County. How many people live on it? Do we have adequate right of way? How many cars are driving up and down it every day? And we built a matrix and we racked and stacked our projects. And now when we um, adopt our annual budget every year, <clears throat> we're doing so based upon that matrix. And so when I have a citizen call me now and they say, why isn't my road getting paved, Commissioner? I can say, because, uh, Mr. and Ms. Citizen, your road is you know 15th or 25th on the list, and here's why, because of traffic data, because of number of houses on the road, because of cost of construction. And I, what I've found is that, by and large, citizens respect and appreciate, one, they want to know that their project is on the, list, on the list, and two, they want to know that the projects that are getting funded in front of theirs are meritorious, that there's a reason that those projects ranked above theirs. And nine times out of 10, I get satisfaction out of the citizens to at least have that level of information. I think that's where we go next Wednesday with this meeting. Uh, we, we pull all of the needs together. Commissioner Ketchell uh, kind of was utilizing that term, and I think it's a fair term. And then we say to our citizens, here's the needs. This is more than the sales tax will pay for, but we're going to use our citizen committee, and we're going to use an objective, fair, and open process to rack and stack these projects, and we're going to take into account trying to leverage dollars from federal, state, and triumph. I, I totally agree with that. If you don't live in the north end of the county, you probably wonder, we keep talking about dirt roads, and I've run into people south end that thinks all of our roads are paved now. But we're about 103 to 104 each miles worth miles, of roads yep. that aren't paved, and, and they cause us a lot of grief. We spend a lot of our budget, which is very little from gas tax and, and funding our, 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 our transportation uh, needs and, and paving needs, just to try to keep those roads passable. And every time it rains good, there's roads that aren't passable. And those are just the county maintained. That's just I the mean, county. if you know, I mean, we've got, I don't know, there's a thousand miles of unmaintained, unmaintained roads that are yeah. out there, peak yes. trails, and, and, and so lots of citizens live on a road that's not even being graded not by the county yet. because that's it right. wasn't historically in our maintenance system. And something uh, that was brought up a lot on our last Facebook Live <clears throat> when we had our Copy with the Commissioner meeting was, uh, 
you know, these roads that are unmaintained, uh, why can't you just come out and pave it? How much could it possibly cost? Uh, can you talk about how much uh, revenue gas tax generates? So I'll, yeah, just kind of off the cuff, I'll, I'll, I'll try and throw some numbers out there. And I'll put this in the context of the sales tax. So a half penny of sales tax in Okaloosa County for a year should generate between 18 to $19 million, of which about $12 million would flow to the counties and 6 or 7 would go to the cities. A penny, a full penny of sales tax, I'm sorry, of gas tax is about $600,000 a year if I've got my numbers right. And so put that into context, um, half penny of sales tax, $18 million, a full penny of gas tax, $600,000. And so gas tax simply doesn't go nearly as far um, as sales tax will at the end of the day. Um, and so you just can't, we can't, you know, they talk now about a million dollars a mile for taking uh, and creating a new two-lane asphalt road, full, you know, fully to standard with stormwater infrastructure um, engineered, uh, and that's really very accurate. You know, we did Fairchild Road mm -hmm. over in Commissioner Fountain's district. Uh, it was a mile and a half of roadway, uh, and that project came in at about 1.6 million dollars, uh, which is a, a um, is, is right on with a million dollars a mile. I didn't believe it at first, but it pans out to be true. So if you have 200 miles of road. There's 200 million. It's 200 million dollars, that, that's that, not hard. Yeah. That, that, that is a alarming uh, fact, and people question me all the time. They don't believe us when we tell them that. And I'm telling them, I said, no, I learned that when I worked at DOT, sitting around the table with all the, the high-level engineers, that that's what, for just a single road, and normally we're building four and six lanes, so it's even more expensive. Sure. Now, we can do that. some other things that are less expensive, right? I mean, there's certainly road stabilization um, projects um, that we can do uh, that are putting down a surface that's not, you know, four right. inches of, of hot mix asphalt. Um, and so Cold, I don't want to be. Mix and stuff that, like that. There are some options that are out there chip and seal, um, uh, lime rock, and so certainly, and we're using a lot of those products to try and, and gain some ground, but it's those are never, the, they're not a replacement for an actual true hot mix asphalt road. I'm glad you hit the gas tax because one of the debates I've been having the last few days actually with a few people, they believe that we have so much gas tax that we don't need this. And they want, and they, and of course they think that we are overtaxing the gas pumps in North Oklahoma County, which I keep saying this over and over again, it is the market, it is the economy, it is fair trade. None of these gas pumps have any more tax on their pumps than they do in the south end of the county or most places. That's right. It is the fact that because we buy it and we don't run around and shop for it, they're going to keep selling it as long as we buy it. And North 85 at the Tom Thumb and the new station across the street are the prime example. When they first opened, it was up and down for the first two or three months like this. And they say, well, I can go to Nice for Fort Walton and this and it's even cheaper than it is here. Yes, it is. Or I can go up into Florella. But but if you drive there and you don't buy from them, it will do that. But then you're also burning gas getting there unless you're already down there. So so that's an interesting thing, but I just can't seem to get some of our constituents well, it's, it's to, to understand that. Yeah, right. So we're an island. If you think about Crestview, it's an island. You have to go many miles in any direction to get to Somewhere services. Uh, and so I think realistically it's just it's that market economy. If you're on an island, everything costs more. With regard to gas, they've determined that when you're in Crestview, you and your tank's below half a tank, you've got to get gas before you're headed anywhere else, and so they just don't have to lower those prices. And it's not, we can say it's not fair, and I get that from constituents a lot, right? They'll say it's not fair, can we do something, why don't you fix the price of gas? But unfortunately, you know, federal grand juries. That's, well, <laughs> but right, re regulating the cost of, of goods then kind of gets away from a free market economy and American principles. And, and so I think sometimes you deal with those that unfairness or that inconsistency because you don't want your government dictating what you're going to pay for everything. Uh, that's a different type of government, and it's not one that's typically uh, smiled upon in this part of the world. And you know, in a way, we have shot ourselves in the foot because over the last 10 years, we have focused so much on the environment and trying to make our air cleaner, which is, a, which is an admirable thing. But what has happened is people are carpooling more and they're buying these Priuses and all these smaller cars that get, you know, 40, 50, 60, some of them 69, 70 miles to the gallon. So as we add cars, we're not, the gas tax is not going up. It's actually going down. So we have to make up for that and we either put abnormal taxes in it or we use a sales tax, which will, which will be up for the choice in November. We're well, going, Go back, ahead, going back to the sales tax. I mean, you've identified just to pave dirt roads, both of y'all, that's a $200 million Stormwater improvements alone is 60 to 70, 60 million, 70 million at least. So, 120 million dollars is a lot of money, but in the overall scheme of things, it's right. not a lot of money when you got 200 mile 
of dirt roads that need to be paved, 60 to $70 million of stormwater. The comments that I hear going throughout the county is, you know, how do we enhance and expand the capacity for, for, for driving? Yep. You know, the Southwest Bypass, which we're committed to do, that ask on that is somewhere between 20 to 25 million in itself. And they must be, yeah, just, yeah. Yeah. 200, plus, the 200 plus million dollar project and, on the west side. And that leverages, you know, we, you know, if, if we get the half cent sales tax to bring 20 or 25 million, then that brings another 175 to 180 million dollars of, of potentially triumph money, state and federal, and even the city of Crestview money. That's right. You get on the south end, those needs are different than the dirt roads. I mean, they've sure. got the Highway 98 and Highway 20. I don't think there's many places that you can live in Okaloosa County and you're not impacted by traffic congestion. Sure. You can't go north and south and you can't go east and west. So it's going to be a challenge. So, you know, and we have the workshop, you know, next Wednesday. I think the difficult part is not, is how do you pare that list of projects down to something manageable to $120 million. That's going to be a challenge. It's going to be competitive as it should be. It should be a spirited discussion. Yep. And, I, and I agree with both of you. The community, and the people who are going to push that lever on that half cent sales act, they want to know where that money is going to be spent, and they need to be told where that money is going to be spent. So, next Wednesday we'll have a list of projects with some estimated cost. Uh, I think some folks are going to be a little sh shocked when they realize how some how much some of these the projects are, are going to sure. be. But the need is there. You know, the cities are going to get, you know, about sixty or seventy million dollars over the next you know decade as part of this. Um, they need to be working through the same thing because. We can fix roads and storm drainage, you know, in the unincorporated area, but then they need to focus on, you know, the areas within their jurisdiction. And I just want to cut in and just remind everybody that's watching at home, uh, if you could ask your questions, I'll be sure to answer them. Uh, and if you are watching this broadcast after the fact, I think you know from the last one that Graham will definitely respond to some of these. So uh, if you do have Lord questions, just, uh, uh, <laughs> just go Except ahead and ask Facebook those questions. Yeah, uh, but yeah, please feel free to ask us your questions. Nathan? Well, so I wanted to, so we've talked a lot about subjects, we talked about spending money. I didn't want to take a minute to talk about us trying to save money. Um, and so I want to talk about the medical examiner contract before we wrap up. And we promised we weren't going to run long today. But this item is still not resolved. It was back in front of us again today. Day. The board did take action. So it's, if, if you've seen any information about this, as you know, the medical examiner, in our view as a commission, has been overcharging Okaloosa County for services. Uh, we are obligated to work with her because that's who the state has uh, nominated uh, in this district for the moment, at least. That may be changing at some point in the future. And so we basically went to her and said, you know, you're, you're overcharging excessively. You're charging, what is it, $800,000, $900,000 mm -hmm. last year? Mm -hmm. uh, Almost a million dollars. For professional services for one medical examiner, for most of that year she didn't even have an assistant medical examiner and so we, we we came back and said you know collectively as the counties in the district the four counties in the district we'll pay you 450,000 for professional services so you came back and basically gave us a formula that would have cost even more this year um, than we paid last year and apparently did not get the message um, that there was going to have to be a dynamic shift so we had a discussion today uh, Commissioner Fountain let you take it from there yeah, uh, today we decided that we would make that offer of, of the 60-day uh, extension, uh, which was kind of negotiated, uh, or at least uh, our state attorney and our different counties decided, the other counties, uh, that if we would go with that, they would be uh, okay with giving her 60-day extension, mainly to work through some of these issues we have and see if, if she's going to remain long-term. And also, as Commissioner Boyle said, the governor and the commission Medical Examiner Commission has yet to decide whether they're going to reappoint her, and that would probably happen in November. So we're having to just make sure that we keep a a medical examiner uh, on board and a staff that can actually respond to deaths and do the autopsies and also testify and handle our court processes. That, as I said to one of the other reporters earlier, that's not a this is not you know something extra. This is the basic minimum we have to do. But we're not going to allow her to keep taking money from the people of this county and I, and, I, and probably all four counties when, when it's not deserved and it's way, way outside of the industry standard. And, uh, you know, having separate contracts made it where for a long time nobody knew what she was really making. And, and luckily, uh, our inspector general and our, our uh, clerk's office and the sheriff asked us to start looking around a little bit. And I'm glad really now, even though this has taken a lot of time and a lot of heartache, a lot of heartburn, but I'm glad we got into this because we're going to make sure that this stops. Yeah. 
the new mm-hmm. stocks. Yeah, we're in full agreement. The four counties are in full agreement to pay her operating costs. What we're arguing about is her professional fees to actually perform you know, the procedure. Her salary. Her but salary. how much did she get paid as of last year? What was she paid? <laughs> it was, I think it was more than three quarters of a million dollars yes. that she received. Good job her, if you can get it. Yeah, for her professional fees. And as the commissioner said, for the most part, she operated just by herself. She did not have a deputy or an associate medical uh, you know, director with her. So that's a tremendous amount of money. So we're arguing about her professional fees. You know, the counties have agreed to offer her 450. She's counted at 850, 900,000, twice that, which is more than what she got last year. And she already heard from the four counties that they considered those fees excessive. So. And for my Facebook detractors, apparently she was asleep during all this when she stood up in front of us because she came in want more money than we were arguing about before. <laughs> so anyway, I'll wait on those comments to come in. Well, and so I just want to add, and again, we, you know, it's an important job. It's absolutely necessary to the prosecution of crimes uh, in, in Okaloosa County. We appreciate what the medical examiner does. We want someone who's experienced, certainly not a job I want. I have no interest um, in, in undertaking autopsies as a new career path. And I, I, I get that the job should be well paid, but I think that well paid is in the two hundred to two hundred fifty thousand dollars for your individual professional services as a doctor who's operating on people who are already dead. <laughs> I I do not believe, and I'm not an expert in doctor salaries, but I believe a salary that exceeds seven hundred fifty thousand dollars per year probably is well and above most doctors who are operating on living people um, as their primary occupation. And so there is just a point of uh, where you exceed reasonableness and go into a level of absurdity, understanding it's our property taxes, your property taxes, that that have been paying that excessive salary. It's like the Twilight Zone. I've never seen or heard of such. We've surveyed uh, jurisdictions throughout the state, and for somebody, and you're right, in that 200, 250, and maybe closer to the 300,000. But that's for but like Dade places. County. Dade and County. And they do three, Broward 10 times County, more autopsies Palm than Beach we do. Beach County, not dealing with, and, and the complexities of that and all that. This is what appears to be far in excess of what it should be. And instead of, you know, coming down, she actually increased her ask, you know, for this year's budget, which t- technically we're in a new budget year. And she notified us that if we couldn't come to terms last week, then she intended to resign. Oh, yeah, she said she was quitting Sunday. <laughs> so, yep. yeah. That's the frustrating part. Is we're trying to negotiate in good faith. We'd made her an offer before that. Uh, and she you know, finally you know, is submitting numbers and asking for extension. So hopefully we can come to an agreement. But the board also authorized us today that if we need to go out and do some emergency procurements and, and hiring people, we can do that under emergency basis. So if you um, if you do autopsies for a living, <laughs> <laughs> yes. send Greg Casella your yeah, resume. Yeah, that's right. Send us some resumes. Yeah. All right. Um, we were going to try and keep it uh, reasonably short. You got today, any questions fellas? or thoughts on there that we uh, need to cover real quick? Not currently. Uh, I think that you know more will be coming later. Uh, so <laughs> when they watch the rerun. Yes, sir. Yes. Just stay on your toes. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, that's all we have for today. Thank you for tuning in, and uh, we'll have uh, stuff for you as it comes through and. Put your comments down there so that we can answer your questions. Anyway, that's all we have for right now.